Hey, I'm Evelyn. I'm a neurodivergent pianist and saxophonist, and I'm pursuing music in college next year. I'm diagnosed with ADHD and have a lot of sensory processing issues, specifically auditory sensory processing issues, and these were a big factor in why I was forced out of my school band. This video is for students like me, for musicians in general who are interested in learning more, and for band directors and teachers. Being a neurodivergent musician is not easy, but in my personal experience, I found that most of the challenges don't come from my own brain, but rather from the systems and structures that we already have in place in music that exclude a lot of people who work the way I do. This video will discuss how I was treated, how I wish I was treated, and the accommodations that I would like to see in the music community and specifically in music education to help accommodate a wider variety of neurotypes. My struggle with music education not accommodating my neurotype mainly began in high school. In my high school, everyone who's interested in taking a band class must march. This was before I was formally diagnosed with ADHD, before I really knew the terminology to describe my sensory issues and sensory distress, and even then, I still knew that marching band was not going to work for me. Even though I had my doubts, I did not want to sacrifice my first chair spot, so I joined, and I got through all of band camp with many sensory meltdowns until I just couldn't do it anymore. I didn't know what was happening, but almost daily, the noise and the stress of being in a 200-person band where directors were yelling over me megaphones, there was brass blaring in the background, the hot sun was streaming down on me in a parking lot, it just, it was physically painful to me. And on a daily basis, I would find myself running away, um, just fleeing the scene and then having a little meltdown in the closet somewhere. It was not fun and it was not sustainable. Even in years of playing, I had never experienced sensory distress and overwhelm in this capacity, even in loud environments, even in like a jazz band, even in gigs where there are amped guitars and everything's really loud. Marching band was just a whole nother level. It wasn't just annoying, it made my brain shut down. And while I don't blame the directors for not knowing what was going on, especially since I didn't even know what was going on when I was running away to go cry in a corner, <laughs> but, um, they did not work to accommodate me. Whenever I communicated with them in advance of joining that I did not think this requirement was going to work for me and I was willing to do anything else related to band other than March, they were not willing to make an exception. I met with them one last time to basically beg them to make an exception for me and they did not and so I was forced to quit. The way that directors enforce these rules is by grading students based on participation in rehearsals and um, in weekend competitions. Losing access to school band was bad enough, but I also lost access to nearly every organized youth ensemble in the state. This included all state bands, all district bands, anything that was like a, a local organized band that was after school and required band participation. I just, I couldn't do it anymore. I had to either try to sneak around the requirement, which I often got caught and got forced out, or I would try to play piano to get around the requirement. This worked in one case, but in every other band that didn't slide. Yes, there are some students like me who are able to tolerate these environments, but for others, it makes it impossible to get a music education outside of private lessons. Enforcing marching band requirements is cutting off access to music education by a group of students who could benefit the most from it. If directors won't consider abolishing this rule, they at least need to provide accommodations for students. First, allowing the use of ear filters is really great. I use these ear filters from Edemonic that I just put in my ears and they cancel out not all of the noise, but a pretty decent amount so that I don't get as overwhelmed by the environment that I'm in, but I can still hear myself playing. Giving longer and more frequent breaks is also necessary. Neurodivergent brains are already under more stress than the average neurotypical one. Having a quiet place to go just to relax, to refuel, to rehydrate, to sit down for a little bit is crucial. Frequent breaks would help address sensory overwhelm. They would also help address some of the physical disabilities that neurodivergent people are more prone to. And they would also put less strain on ADHD brains that have trouble focusing or exerting a lot of attention for a prolonged period of time with no breaks, especially when it's something that they're not interested in. But all in all, these are two examples of accommodations that wouldn't just help neurodivergent people, but also neurotypical people. A lot of neurotypical people could benefit from the ear protection that ear filters provide as marching bands are often very loud and could provide some kind of like long-term hearing damage without protection. And breaks are just good for everyone. Who doesn't work better after a little time to rest and eat a snack or something? And one last note about marching band before I get into the rest of the video. I have noticed that a lot of times students who don't get verbal commands on the first try are often ridiculed and blamed in front of the whole band. If more directors realize that my failure to 
understand verbal directions on the first time was not due to a lack of trying, but rather difficulties with attention and also difficulties with verbal and auditory processing, then I don't think I would have had as many meltdowns, I wouldn't have had such high stress levels, and I also would have felt more accepted and embraced by the community. Similarly, stimming or any kind of self-stimulatory behavior like fidgeting, rocking back and forth, hand flapping, was generally met with not disdain but just kind of like annoyance and I think it's really important for directors and teachers to understand that these are not negative things necessarily. Sometimes elevated levels of stimming can be a sign of distress but even then it's not something to be repressed. These behaviors are helpful to regulate neurodivergent brains so please don't shame students for exhibiting these behaviors. And next, rehearsals. I spoke to multiple other neurodivergent musicians and a similar point came up over and over again. Breaks. Not just in marching band, like I mentioned before, but also just in general practices. Even just a five minute break in the middle of a long rehearsal, a long lesson, anything like that is really important to help recharge us. When I have to sit down for a long time with no breaks, I notice getting more uncomfortable. It's harder for me to listen and often I find myself ignoring bodily needs like eating, drinking water, when I have to sit in a three hour rehearsal with no breaks. And I've noticed that in a lot of music rehearsals, they don't really have natural breaks the same way um, non-artistic classes do. In like math class, per se, we'll have like maybe a five minute transition where we're going between activities, but in rehearsals, it's more like we just kind of move between pieces very quickly. Maybe when someone's working with another section, you kind of get a break, but you still are expected to be listening the whole time, which can be very straining, especially for people with ADHD. While it may feel like you're taking needless time out of the class, it's actually providing students with an opportunity to take care of themselves and come back even more prepared to learn and more focused than they were before. There is a lot more I could talk about here, but I'll leave you with that for now. Really, the main way that I think the music community can improve is by understanding and education. Once people learn about neurodiversity, accommodations will be much easier to achieve. This goes for everyone, even musicians who don't direct or teach. To me, great music embraces and accepts diversity, both in genre and style, but also in the people who create it. And finally, thinking about the way that the music world could progress if these changes are adopted really excites me. So go forth and make great art.